Hi guys and welcome to the channel. Today let's cover GDK21 virtual threads feature and how that applies to uh, closure development. And there are some caveats that we'll cover, but I think it's a pretty good time to uh, make yourself familiar with virtual threads because probably uh, that will really help and speed up our closure applications as well. So first of all, uh, I think uh, this gu uh, this uh, guide uh, is one of the best resources I found on the internet to make yourself familiar what uh, is virtual thread in uh, Java and how that compares to platform threads and what are the benefits and why uh, virtual threads exist. So um, I'll add the link to the description, so take a look. But uh, first of all, uh, if we uh, what what virtual threads are allowing us to do is that we can follow this simple pattern of a thread per task uh, execution model. So, for example, we want uh, to do something uh, in parallel. We can just assign that task to a new thread and don't care about thread pools uh, and all that stuff. But uh, why we need thread pools for old platform threads? And that's because uh, they are not cheap, so they are. They have a quite significant uh, footprint in terms of uh, memory, uh, so you cannot like assign uh, allocate uh, a lot of threads, but your your memory usage will just grow, and also uh, like that this context switching between threads is also expensive. So if you uh, try to run this code uh, and it basically just do a uh, couple loops um, uh, a hundred thousand times uh, it creates a new thread and this is just a constructor for a platform thread in Java, a default one. Uh, so if we run that, uh, let's see what happens. So we, if with uh, platform threads uh, we are getting the out of memory error and uh, basically reaching the memory limit. Uh, so we cannot do that uh, in an application, but compare that with virtual threads, um, we just received done, so everything just uh, completed and we created this number of virtual threads. So now we don't care about thread pools, we don't care about the amount of threads that we can use, uh, but also, so virtual threads uh, will be uh, related to our platform threads in a way that um, there is a limited pool of platform threads and then when we have a new virtual thread it will be assigned to one of the platform threads and now this platform thread thread is called the carrier of, of the virtual thread and it will do the execution of the virtual thread until the virtual thread will block on some input output and when it's blocked uh, JVM will just detect that and get this uh, blocked code from the platform thread, freeze that, um, release that platform thread, and then assign a pending virtual thread to that thread where it can continue execution. But once the uh, blocking call is finished, um, this will be returned back to the pool of uh, threads to execute and it will be eventually assigned to one of the platform threads. So we have this new, uh, like you can think about virtual threads as lightweight threads or uh, you're probably familiar in Clojure there's chorusing with uh, lightweight channels. So it's like a similar idea, but it comes from in, by default in JDK 21. And why we interested in closure uh, about that? A uh, couple reasons. First one is that uh, the ring, which is uh, one of the standard libraries to use to build uh, web servers, like abstractions, uh, abstractions on top of uh, servlets, uh, was released with support of uh, JT12. Uh, and JT is starting from, I believe, version two, uh, 10, uh, 10, 11, 12, supports virtual thread, uh, thread pools uh, by default. So that means that we can configure our JT instance and uh, uh, configure it with uh, virtual threads 
So our requests can be executed on these lightweight threads. And that actually uh, improves the performance a lot because if uh, we have a lot of uh, I.O. blocking I.O. inside our HTTP handlers, now those blocked threads are not actually blocking the, the real uh, threads that are handling the request because they can be uh, removed from the thread and then wait one the ones that are unblocked in terms of I.O. And uh, I prepared a small example to show that. So let's run the main function, main, and it will start a JT server with default configuration. So it's still using the uh, platform threads. And while we're waiting, let's run our benchmarking, and I'm using this WRK tool. Um, so it will doing a it is doing a thirty seconds test, and we're doing it in twelve threads and there's four hundred connections, and our handler is just doing a small uh, sleep for uh, fifty milliseconds, and the sleep is basically a blocking I/O operation. Uh, so let's wait for the results, and then we will compare that with um, virtual threads. So here we have uh, like eight um, eight hundred uh, uh, RPS and now let's compare it with um, virtual threads so now we want this and I want to stop my current main um, let's remove this so now we are running a JT server, uh, but on virtual threads. And to do that, we want to create a new thread pool. And then you basically configure it by setting it to a new virtual thread per task executor. And then you're passing it as a input uh, config to our run JT handler um, command uh, function. So let's run main and start our same benchmark uh, again. So that's the previous result uh, and as you can see I got now thousands of RPS so like 7000 of RPS and let's wait until this is completed and see if now we have the similar results. So results are similar. So now what I want to do is to show you uh, and basically now I'm on the JT, uh, closure uh, 11 and if I change this code to, to this, so I want to use delay and then I want inside delay call out my sleep and then I want just to uh, resolve that delay. So really it's, it's basically the same code, right? But let's see what will happen now if I run the same benchmark. So we, we, we now own virtual threads. Um, and if I run this, uh, no, I want to start my main first. Now let's run it again. So as you can see, the test finished, but uh, there is really sad results about the RPS, right? We, we don't have uh, near this uh, 7,000. Now we have just uh, 300 RPS. And that's the problem because I said uh, there is a caveat and um, it is described here, it is called pinned virtual threads. So there are two cases when a virtual thread, in case of blocking operation, uh, won't be unmounted from the carrier thread. And the case is when uh, this IO happens inside a synchronized block method, or when we're calling the uh, native library uh, by GNI. Uh, we are interested in this case and if we go inside the delay and go inside the implementation of delay and then uh, checking this deref function you can see we have this synchronized block and that's what causing our virtual thread to be pinned to the carrier so we're not removing it from the uh, platform thread and that's why we have this degradation of performance so how we fix that uh, basically we're waiting for uh, release of closure 12 because here uh, we can see this case is defined so to avoid pinning 
in this version, uh, they are now locks instead of synchronized blocks. And remember this, we have synchronized. So now if I start my, uh, stop my REPL, go to the project CLJ and switch to uh, release candidate for the 12 version and start the REPL again. And now I hope I refreshed everything. So if I go inside delay and inside implementation, now you see we have the lock and instead of um, synchronized block here, we're using the lock and we're checking it, uh, we're using the lock to, to synchronize basically. And what that will allow us to, to do is if we run our main again, and now let's run our uh, benchmark. And notice we still have our block that caused the problem. So we have delay and then inside the delay we have this IO operation. All right, so our benchmark is finished. And as you can see, we're back to normal. So we have 7,000 RPS, which is pretty similar to what we have before. Uh, without this delay. Cool. So I guess that's it for today. Uh, I hope it was useful and I'm really looking into uh, trying more uh, of virtual threads and new features of Java. I'm also interested in uh, the structured con concurrency uh, project. Uh, probably I'll cover it in the next video. But for now, that's it. Uh, please like, uh, share and uh, subscribe to the channel and also there are ways to support my work on Buy Me A Coffee. Links are in the description. Thanks a lot. See you next video. Bye bye.